Gucci has built upon its prestige status in the early 1900s, becoming a staple amongst celebrities and royalties. However, it nearly went bankrupt in the early 1990s due to a series of unfortunate events. Let's dive in to see what happened. It all started when Gucci Gucci left Italy for London and started working as a dishwasher at the Savoy Hotel. While working through many jobs at the hotel, he learned the habits and lifestyles of the elites. He could not help but notice that high-quality leather luggage was popular amongst the affluent. Gucci then went back to Italy, where he served in the army. At the end of the World War, he wanted to use his learnings from London and thus worked at a leather company. He spent some time learning the ropes of the leather business to finally open his Gucci leather shop in 1921. As the quality of his products attracted more customers, Gucci did not hesitate to raise the prices. He learned that high-quality products fetch a greater value at higher prices amongst the affluent. When Mussolini ruled over Italy in the 1920s, many countries imposed sanctions on Italy, thereby reducing the availability of certain raw materials. Gucci was forced to combine leather with other materials to design his items. In addition to luggage, Gucci started to produce wallets and belts as well. Times were tough but still, Gucci's reputation reached all corners of the world, with tourists traveling long distances only to get their hands on the brand's items. However, World War II marked a harsh period for Gucci, with demand nosediving. Italy's economic conditions post-war was not conducive to Gucci's premium leather business. The firm was struggling to stay alive but it managed to secure a lifeline loan from banks. Guccio's oldest son, Aldo, devised a strategy to revitalize the brand's image. A green and red colors associated with equestrians were used to give the impression that Gucci provided saddles to royal families. The strategy worked well, as many celebrities, including Grace Kelly, visited the shop thereafter. This is also when the flora pattern scarf, originally made for Grace Kelly, became famous. After Guccio passed away, Aldo decided to expand the brand into the U.S. Aldo's two other brothers also joined him in managing the company. By 1950s, the luxury market was flourishing and Gucci positioned itself at the forefront of competition. The company was performing well until the mid-1970s. It started with employees in the U.S. providing a subpar customer service level to customers. Then family feuds started taking a toll on the management of the company. Aldo's son, Paolo, wanted to be more involved in the company but he was not given the chance. He thus signed his shares to his cousin, Maurizio, to force out his own father out of the president's role. Despite the Gucci family wars, the company managed to break the 600 million euro mark by mid-1980s. The brand's history and reputation outweighed the family squabbles and drama. In the late 80s however, Aldo was charged with tax evasion and embezzlement of company funds and was sentenced to around a year in jail. By early 1990s, Gucci's empire started to tumble. It might have to do with the fact that a new generation was running the company. The quality of the products deteriorated with the addition of canvas and plastics. Revenues were declining and debts were mounting. If it did not get a cash influx soon, it would need to file for bankruptcy. InvestCorp was then brought in by Maurizio to rescue the company. But guess what? Turns out that Maurizio was not truthful. InvestCorp filed a lawsuit against Maurizio for withholding critical financial information about the business. Maurizio was thus forced to sell his majority stake in the company and leave for good. By the way, Maurizio was shot dead in Italy a few years later. It turned out that his wife had him killed for some reason. Now let's get back on track. InvestCorp recognized the value of the Gucci brand and worked hard in rebuilding the company. Existing employees were reshuffled and promoted since they knew the ins and outs of the business. This is when Domenico De Sol was appointed CEO of Gucci. He reinstated Gucci's luxury image by changing the product mix to reduce the use of plastic and canvas. Advertising budget was increased and investment in employee training was underway. New flashy designs were used to captivate customers' attention. All of these worked well to push Gucci back in the road to profitability within a few years. By mid-1990s, InvestCorp decided to cash out a 30% stake in Gucci by launching an IPO on the New York Stock Exchange. InvestCorp sold the rest of its stake, profiting from a rise in the stock price. By 1997, Gucci revenues tripled from 1993 levels to over 800 million euros. The stock price was up by more than 
Now, if you watched our previous video on Prada, you would know that Prada was buying shares in Gucci, only to hand them over to Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. All of that was part of a hostile takeover scheme. But Gucci worked with Louis Vuitton's competitor, Pinault Printemps Redoute, to fend off the threat. Pinault's investment in Gucci enabled the firm to purchase Yves Saint Laurent by the end of the millennium. From there, Gucci diversified in other adjacent product categories and revenues crossed the 1.5 billion euro mark. As always, I have plotted some financials to see how Gucci was performing. Under Pinault, which renamed to Caring, Gucci was taken to new heights. If we look at revenues, we can observe the revenue grow from 1.6 billion euros in 2004 to nearly 10 billion euros in 2019. Of all the brands I have covered by now, Gucci is the most impressive in terms of growth. Recurring operating income grew as well and the margin improved. The growth since 2015 can be attributed to Marco Bizzari's leadership, along with Alessandro Michel's design creativity. Bizzari did not impose any kind of budget on Michel in an attempt to foster creativity. From what I read in the annual reports, the growth comes from constantly innovating and introducing thousands of new items. Their aim is to form an emotional bond with the customers. They have won the hearts of millennials by integrating the digital and in-store experience. Are you a fan of Gucci? What is your favorite product? Do you think there is more room for growth? As always, let us know what you think.